the next presenter is Professor Chandrasekharan Praveen, title of the paper, Nurturing Lesson Skills at SHU for Virtual Teacher Education, a minor study. Uh, namaskar, uh, respected chair, uh, delegates attending the conference. Uh, I'm a teacher educator. It's going to be something on virtual teacher education. Uh, now, you know, when uh, for one year we have been trying to teach online, which meant the teacher had to prepare digital content, as you can see here. Earlier it was face-to-face, -face, you know, it's real, and now you have to convert into digital and learning, demonstrating skills, everything has to be digital, online. So there were problems. Now, please read what he says. Even in the morning also we listen to all this. So teacher educators too have to learn, even students have to learn. AI has a major role to play. So I'll quickly tell you something about backgrounds, the problem, the objective, method, findings. Okay, so here goes. Uh, during 2021, I was forced to teach online. Okay, and now Omicron is spreading. So again, it's continuing online. So virtual teacher education is slowly becoming the norm. What's the problem? Teacher educators and teacher trainees are not familiar with online pedagogy. And many teacher educators are unsure which digital tool to use effectively. Okay. So what are my objectives? I'm trying to identify the essential skill set for virtual teacher education. And to find out what is needed for when you shift to AI, what skills when preparing digital content, how to assess and so on. So I looked into these aspects, drawing on my experience of teaching using um, digital technology. And for almost 10 years, I've been trying that. Now it's an empirical, analytical, descriptive study. I'm drawing on hindsight from my own online pedagogy and also review of recent studies on virtual teacher education. Now, this is Professor Gary Fallon. Now, why he is important is because right now, with the assistance of IBM, they are checking the possibility of teacher education using AI. And please read what he says. Whatever you do it, it's the algorithm that matters. And he is even now, he is engaged in this project, but he says it is no substitute for face-to-face -face interaction. Here are a few main findings. There are many findings. I'm just mentioning the main. Now, for teaching prose, poetry, grammar, for language education, or even knowledge-based subjects, the presentation mode is different, the digital content is different, the lesson template is different. Because when it's going to be digital, which means even trainees should be familiar with the lesson template in the digital form. Many lack the experience. Now, uh, when you want things to be presented digitally, you should prepare short learning objects and then try the flip mode of learning. Are our teacher educators adept at preparing this? Are our trainees adept at Because one day they're going to use this. And how do you monitor and assess collaborative tasks? Because most of the learning takes place in the collaborative mode. In the online mode, how do you monitor it? Early in the face-to-face -face uh, sessions, it was very easy to monitor collaborative learning. But now it's become, are you familiar with that? Do you know how to assess that kind of learning? And now very important, now you're thinking of LMS. Do you know the main learning takes place on the discussion board? What kind of question do you pose? How do you elicit responses? How do you see that everyone involves? What kind of questions should you ask so that they actively involve? What kind of preparations go before it? No prior experience and you want to shift to AI? And very importantly, demo and modeling of teaching skills is what teacher education is basically about. And in the face-to-face -face mode, it's very easy. Now on the online, is it easy? Do you have sufficient ideal tools for this? These all have to be addressed when you think of shifting to AI. So but there are certain limitations. I mentioned only a few. These challenges which I've identified are based on my field experiences. And, but I've not tried in different settings. And you know, more significantly, online assessment for practice teaching, which I've not done. In fact, in 2021, this was abandoned completely because, you know, using face recognition tools is a big problem. Connectivity is a big problem. 
and even educators are struggling how to address this particular issue, assessing practice teaching. Now, what are the implications? You have to familiarize teacher educators and stakeholders on the ways of offering virtual teacher education. Okay? These are some of the references. Please look at the last two references. I've already done a study using the race model for curriculum transaction. And also check the feasibility of leveraging the chat box for virtual learning. These are two major, but there are several other references. Please read my full paper. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Yeah, uh, the audience doesn't have any questions. So one of the chairpersons was here. I'm a teacher educator too. Uh, so as we get your references, so one of, can you talk a little bit about the race model that you yes. have? Yes. And why did you use it? Uh, yes. In 2021, I was forced to use technology for teaching. We didn't have any model to follow. Then I found out uh -huh. that the University of New South Wales had come up with a model called the RACE model. That is R stands for resources, A for activity, S for support, and E for evaluation. So I studied the model, checked how it was effective. I adapted for in the teacher education setting for teaching my own trainees, checked the effectiveness, and then it was present in the conference and it has been published. That is what it is. Oh, yeah, I asked because that's a new model for me. I've heard of other models, so that's the reason I asked. Because TPAC is a very commonly used uh, uh, research. Uh, I mean, it's also used in research, uh, for that model. And one question that I'm itching to ask, uh, you, you said you used the chat function. Uh, what was the response? I mean, how many responses do you get every day in the chat? And my, my pre-service teachers are right here. And we had some challenging issues with the chat interaction, right? So what was your experience? You'll be amazed if I tell you something. I was teaching in a yeah. teacher training college which had accessibility and affordability issues. Believe it or not, we used WhatsApp for teaching one full period. So everything comes in the chat mode. The teacher's presentation audio a little bit, then everything is chatting. And then after the class also, the material is there. So anyone who misses can come back and learn. Videos, because of bandwidth, we used to send it by email. So they view it and come and sit for learning in the flip mode. So in the chat, the real discussion takes place. I pose a question, they chat. So synchronous learning in the chat mode in on WhatsApp. The same thing is also possible in an LMS. But the positive problem is in that particular college, they did not have uh, LMS. That is a learning management system. But there's a possibility of exploit because I did a couple of MOOCs where the real learning took place through discussion board on the LMS. So some questions, you know, like readily common answer, it's not open-ended answers, but single one definite answer. If you feed it, if you, have, if you have a robot to answer that, you can save a lot of time. The teacher's time can be saved. So chatbots are a great possibility, but you know, normally in teacher education, we have other aspects, social aspects, the, uh, uh, the, the emotional aspects. So everything can all predefine answers won't suffice. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, what I was trying to know as a colleague in the profession was the participation of pre-service teachers in the chat mode. Like what was the uh, uh, quantum of uh, participation? That, that was what I was getting to. Like, uh, was it really a lot or it was more teacher talk and <laughs> so that was what I mean. Your questions were not being answered. Like, you ask it in three or four ways, but you get no answer. Actually, before every session, I write down my questions to avoid ambiguity in responses. Okay. And I also say you cannot repeat answers given by one person. So they wait to immediately answer because they don't get another an opportunity to answer otherwise. And then, you know, they, I, what, what was important was students were learning from the other students. That, that learning okay. was happening, you know. And it is typed and it is there. If somebody misses, they can come back and again see it. So it becomes some kind of crowdsources, resources, which you are going to have it on the chat box. Thank you, Dr. Praveen. Thank you. 
Dr. Praveen, thank you for your presentation. And uh, it's really interesting and the need of the art to notice if learners are learning in the virtual mode and if teachers are actually teaching in the virtual mode. My question to you is, uh, I, I suppose, I don't know if you've taken it a level higher. Have you measured learning that is happening when teaching is happening virtual mode? Learning of the teacher, teacher to learn about her skill set when she's in the virtual environment. Have you measured learning for the teacher? That's my question. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a real challenging question, you know, because all of us were suddenly in one boat. Everyone has to do online teaching together. So those who had been uh, practicing, you know, in 2015, I tried testing using WhatsApp and it was recognized as a uh, as a best practice by the uh, CMAT, the uh, government management department, they found it good. So I had experience, but my teachers, they were still struggling. They thought teaching face to face, keeping the camera and then speaking means that is online teaching. No, that is not online teaching. But to plan well in advance. What kind of content are you giving? Now, because they said everything is, they started downloading whatever is available on the internet and giving it. Students couldn't read. They couldn't assimilate the content. But here, the teacher's role is to present them properly. So when I couldn't ask personal questions to my teacher and say, no, you're not doing the right thing. But I found that they're all struggling. Why? They've not been trained to teach, but they were slowly learning. Because that was the same time when several webinars by several agencies were given out how to go about teaching online. So they were learning. The first year, they struggled. The second year, a little more comfortable. I think they can become much better in the years to come but you need to give them proper training. Right, right, sir, I agree with you. We have a long way to go in, uh, you know, enhancing our skill sets using technology as teachers, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Praveen, once again. Thank you so much. No, Thank you for the opportunity.